Howdy. Hey, what's up, dude? Not much. How are you? I'm all right. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I'm I'm really late. <laughs> it's been, cra <laughs> no, been, a, all, been a crazy day. Uh, all good. Yeah. Your week treating okay so far? I hope. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. All right. Um. So you wanted to focus on ones this time, huh? Yeah. I just. I don't know. I've lost like 100 MMR points. I, I just don't know what's what's going on. All right. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so is to... there a particular replay or something you wanted to go over? Um, so I played a couple today. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be the easiest because I'm sure there's a lot we can go over <laughs> as far as a replay yeah. goes. Yeah. Let me see if I can view it. There we go. All right, let me share my screen. Cool. All right, let's take a look here. All right, first of all, um, you should be able to, can you see my drawing yeah. on screen? Okay, yep. perfect. All right, so just so I know, like, what rank are you roughly in, in ones right now? Uh, I think this is my one or yeah. Okay. So I know, um, like, kickoffs. Need... Yeah, I would say, if anything, maybe you flipped a little too late here. Okay. And I'll show you that. You can see by the time you jump, you're, like, at this, like, blue line right here. Which yeah. I think is too late, because then by the time you land, you're basically underneath the ball. So I'd say if anything, maybe just flip a little earlier. Cause yeah, you do want to be landing somewhere with your front wheels, like around this inner circle. So that way, by the time you jump, you can see when you hit this ball, you're hitting it like right here. So if you okay. jump, if you jump from back here, you can actually hit the middle of the ball like this. Okay. And generally speaking, instead of front flipping into the ball like this, you would want to be flipping to the left. So that way you hit the ball in the middle and you also push the ball in the same direction that you're also that your car is going. So that'd okay. be the ideal scenario. I can show you some examples of what a good kickoff will look like okay. in a little bit. Yeah. But nice job on recognizing that the near post was open there. Not bad. And then so these ones, whenever I turn and flip, I just need yeah, I would say if you can, try to get used to flipping twice on every kickoff because that'll be... Uh... And I'll mm -hmm. say this too. So when you pick up this boost, right, um, mm -hmm. I would say you're driving a little bit on the right side of it. I was going to say if you actually drive like this, then if you do like a side flip, you know, like this way to the right, yeah. it'll actually propel you down down the middle of the, of the, of the lane here. So okay. I think you're... You're going straight here, and I like the fact that if you're, you know, if you're not confident, you don't flip, which is, I guess, fine at this rank, you know. But like, I would suggest to, yeah, maybe go pick up this pad, and as you pick up this pad, then dig or either so, go diagonal so flip to the right. I'm, yeah, so as I'm going left there, just mm -hmm. press like fully right on the stick. Yep, and then and flip right. And flip. and flip right. Yep, because you're already facing, you know, you're already facing this way, right? Yeah. So if you flip to the right, you can see how that line is in between. Yeah. So I'll show you again. I can kind of show you some examples of what that'll look like. But yeah, this guy, I want to see his kickoff. He did a pretty fast kickoff here. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> you can see how much faster that flip is, isn't, you know, so. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look here. So yeah, you went past the kickoff, which is fine. I like your... um. You're pathing here, you know, you're obviously going over the pads, but I'd like to see you maybe flip a little bit more. So mm -hmm. at this point right now, if you do a diagonal flip to the left here, and if you do it very slight, you can actually pick up both of these pads. So instead okay. of driving you, if you, you, if you time it right, you can actually flip and you can do a diagonal flip here and pick up both 
this pad and this one. Not saying that you'd actually make it back in time, but I'm just saying there are some boost pads where you can flip and get two or even three pads at a time. So okay. I'll, just I'll... just something to note. Yeah. Like here as well, like at this point, if you were to flip just to the left, you would actually be able to pick up this pad and then maybe even this pad here as well, um, depending on where you go. So there are like some of those angles, right? Since you're traveling so far fast this way, if you actually yeah. flip to the left, you'll pick up this one for sure. So. Ooh, I like that kickoff. <clears throat> yep. See, you can see the difference now is you before I said you flipped earlier or you flipped later mm -hmm. when you got to like roughly this point on the blue line. Now you can yeah. see you pick up, you jump as you pick up this boost pad when you jump, when you're going over it, which is perfect. So mm -hmm. now that means that you land, look now where you land, you land on that circle. But now by the time you jump, you're hitting more of the middle of the ball. You're not right. underneath yeah. it like you were before. Yep, that makes sense. Um, if anything, I'd say, yeah, if you can, maybe flip to the right on the kickoffs. Generally speaking, you don't want to front flip into them, but uh, just... Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice try. Yeah, I'd say if anything, like, okay, you had your run. This is basically going to be bouncing out. I would have actually expected this to bounce off this post here and actually gone out back behind you. So I'm a little surprised that it didn't. Either way, there are some times where you, like, you, the ball is bouncing back towards you, right, as you're also dropping back. So for the fact of you being able to actually turn around and then shoot this by the time this guy gets back is probably very little. But um, just because this ball was dropping back very hard, right? Because you tried yeah. to make a shot. So I would say, if anything, you should be prioritizing the, uh, the boost grab instead. Just okay. pick up this pad. Then you can make a turn. If you, make, if you turn on ball cam, you know, and you see him still back there in net, you know, then you can grab this boost pad. Then you can make another challenge here on the ball and shoot it, right? Or if you see that maybe, uh, you know, maybe if you grab his boost pad, then if the ball is here and he starts bringing it out, you know, the ball this way center, okay, well then you know you can either challenge him or you'll have to just drop back. But yep. you'll be able to make a more informed decision because now, because from this view where I'm sitting, if you have his pad, you know you have 100 and the ball yeah. is basically just, just coming out of his net area. So, this would be a way more informed decision than this. Because right now, you don't have a whole lot of info. <laughs> you know? Sure. So, yeah. Now you know, okay, well, yep, because you couldn't see him earlier. No, well, now you try to challenge, and it's like, well, yeah, you didn't really have a whole lot of info to work off of, so you kind of lost this just on the info department, right? Yeah. So, no, that yeah. Sense. And, like, <laughs> yeah. So kind of sucks that this wasn't in. But, yeah, now he can see you backing up, so it's like, okay, well, now he thinks he can go. Well, now he had actually he had enough boost to challenge this pretty early, so, so yeah. Again, here too, I'd say there's a similar scenario where um, on this drop back here, so you pick up that mid boost, which is good. At this point, I would say it's a pretty similar situation because you don't know where the other guy is. The uh, right. the the 200 IQ play here would actually be use your review, reverse camera, and mm -hmm. see where he is, right? See if he's right behind you or not. Um, the ideal play here would actually just be grab this boost and then just do like a little turn like this, like do a little U turn, okay. just get away okay. from the ball. Cause then again, there's that information gathering, right? Where you can get away from the ball, see more of the field, see what's going to happen, then make a play. You can always charge at the ball again, but sure. if you ever, have you watched uh Randy's one V one masterclass video at all? Uh, I saw it initially when it streams, but I never read. Okay. Um, one of the things that he says is that the safest place for the ball to be or the safest place to 50 is actually in your corner. And that's exactly where this ball is going. So that's why you can actually afford to grab this boost pad and turn around in net and kind of see where it's going to go. Because it's not mm -hmm. an immediate threat. You know the guy is somewhere behind you, right? So, like, if you just do this really quickly, you can actually just boost all the way to your boost. Then just kind of hold on to the 100 and turn around. Then, yeah. then you can beat the ball. And then by the time this rolls, I'm going to bet it's going to roll down and you can basically take a challenge here makes sense yeah makes sense so sometimes i think that is twice now because now the fact that you stay close to it again look it's a little awkward for you right now you're on the wall right. you're like okay well now i gotta take a weird challenge whereas if you had just sat 
if you had just gotten your boost, went to net and turned around, now you'd see where he's at, and this would be coming straight towards you. Right. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Okay, so this is going to be kind of nitpicky here, but um, once you're supersonic, you actually don't need to use boost. So this is a straight line. So you're supersonic here. You actually yep. don't need to use any more boost whatsoever. And you've that, yeah. the fact that you already hit this, okay, I don't mind you boosting here. You're trying to steal your own boost, which is fine. But now here, you don't need to use any boost whatsoever. You're still supersonic. As long as you don't turn, you're good. You can just drive mm -hmm. down the net, pick up 100. You could still have maybe 30, 35 in the tank, which may not seem like a lot, but like every little spurt that you use is boost that you don't, you don't need to waste it, right? Mm -hmm. So even there, those little spurts, like what did that do to you? Like, especially when you spurt it like that, like just a little puff, it's like that, that's not gonna propel your car forward that, that much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just hold on to it and just see what he's gonna do. Um, one of the things, like I said earlier, um, the safest place for the ball to be is in your corner. Well, the same thing is true for him. So he has the entire wall behind him. If you challenge this ball right now, where do you think this is going to go? <laughs> Towards the back wall and back out, right? It's going to do one yeah. of these. So you don't need to challenge this at all, especially when you're up one to one. This is such a risky play to go for, especially with the 24 boost now that you have. So... I would say, if anything, just wait and fake challenge this and kind of shadow and see where he's going to go. If he goes across, then you immediately race for his boost. If he starts getting, you know, if he starts getting, like, if he turns up and tries to go behind the ball, so, like, say the ball goes like this, you know, then, uh, you know, the ball goes like this and then he propels his car and he goes behind it, then you know, okay, I might actually have to turn back and make a save or whatever, right, get ready for a play. <laughs> but if he goes and brings everything across, that's when you raced for his boost um but you can see like just based off of statistics as well um even from this position like what's the chance that this is going to be a good outcome and what's the chance that he's going to push it this way still and the fact that you're going to challenge here and the fact that it's still going to go into net because look at even though it may seem like a good challenge look at this angle that you have to hit you have to basically pinch it straight into his net what and yeah. like what's the chance that that's going to happen it's like one percent maybe less you know what i mean so like yeah it's just not a good yeah. challenge even just from like a probability standpoint just because he's got too much wall behind him and everything so yeah and then he scored off of it okay so one of the things too about the boost pathing here okay you challenged bad idea okay whatever now your option is to drop back well what do you think the best option here is to actually to go straight yep back. straight to net <laughs> but you didn't you just kind of went out like this way and then pick up the outside pads where well it's like well why pick up this pad this pad this pad you can actually boost all the way through it as you pick them up you can be there quicker you may not actually get a save right because you kind of dove too far but like you're uh -huh. going way too far outside mm -hmm. so that's one of those things where it's like okay you're center but like well now why are you going now dude the net's over to your left <laughs> like yeah so, yeah, I think you get the idea. The net's over here, my guy, not over there. Not in the corner. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, he scores off of it. But that all started from the challenge. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Flat kickoffs. Love it. <laughs> there you go. I like that. That's a little bit better. The, the second kickoff helps. And you can see you actually had boost afterwards. You're picking up yeah. pads. You've flipped, which is good. You have 20 boost. Um, I think you're already, um, again, this is very nitpicky, but you're already supersonic right here. You can basically stop at 20 or 19. You don't need to boost okay. anymore. Okay. So the fact that you drive through this and you boost through it, it may help with the actual 50-50 in terms of you getting more power because you're boosting constantly through it. But I wouldn't recommend it here. Um, and you're wasting nine boost. So, like, yeah. It's just, it's like, if you're trying to, s either, like, you're trying to save boost or you're trying to use all of it. You know what I mean? So, it's a little inefficient to kind of do that sometimes. So. 
Not bad. I would take his boost if you can. Nice try. There you go. I like the drop back. See, now it may be excessive, but you see the difference now. Whereas if you stayed like close to the play, you might not have as much info as you have now. Okay, now you know. Right. Okay, I've got a position. I've got 100 boost. I know he's coming center. So now you have a lot more information to work with. They might be a little more extreme in this case, but um, but yeah. Okay, yeah, see, that's the thing. I think there's a common thing right now as far as boost usage goes, because right here, you can flip. You can actually, if you want, I wouldn't mind you picking up a hun boosting 100 all the way to this boost and turning and getting it. That's one option. The other option is to just front flip, pick up this pad, then drive, and take the ball this way. So you kind of have a couple options. You could also just take this corner. Yeah, I would really honestly take your corner. That'd probably be play number one, just so he can't get back as quick. Because you mm -hmm. know the ball is rolling this way, so you might as well just take your corner boost. But either way, I think your your boost usage here. Oh yeah, see? Okay, you did. All right, never mind. I guess that's fine. Um, I would just be wary. I think it would be more appropriate to flip sometimes um, I would be careful about boosting that much. I know I just contradicted myself, but like if you didn't, if this boost wasn't actually here, it's just a replay glitch for this yeah. boost not being here. But like if this wasn't here, this boost usage from here to here is totally useless. Right. I would actually yeah. just front flip here. That way you can save the boost similar to kickoff, right? And then kind of use it, use it more when you have the ball possession. Whereas like if you boost now, you're kind of just wasting a lot of it in the beginning. So. I'd just be something to watch out, I guess. Yep, makes sense. There you go. I like the mid boost steal as well. Ooh, he had a good, really good save there. Obviously, I think a front flip right here would yeah. be fine. Um, one thing to note too, I mentioned this a couple times in some of my other videos, but um, when you jump, look how horizontal you are to the ground, right? So like, it's a little awkward to shoot from this angle. Just so like. The jump itself does not actually get you that much height, right? So your actual jump, like, yeah, let's say the ball is at this height and the ground is on the orange line. Your jump actually gets you to, like, right here, right? But if you add up the length of your car, so we go from here to here, then we add this much, which would be basically about that much. You can see now with just a single jump and actually tilting your car back, so if, as you come along, you jump here, tilt back, you can actually then use your jump and front flip this into net. Yeah. So that's like the higher level shooting that I would say, you know, try to get comfortable with is just jumping into it and front flipping. Yeah. But because you don't tilt your car back at all, you stay horizontal with the ground like this. You're hitting the underside of the ball, which you know might be a little awkward because now you're going to pop up the ball like this. Whereas if you jump and tilt back, you can kind of come like this. And if you front flip here, it'll be straight into net. So I think, does that make sense as far as like matching yeah. the height of the ball? Cause, yeah. Cause I think that's going to be a big thing um, as well, as far as like shooting goes. Cause yeah, you can see you jump, but you're not actually that high. You know, your jump doesn't really do a whole lot compared to the, where the height of the ball is. Right. But this is totally a hundred percent shootable. Uh, with the front foot. I like the uh, the boost grabs so far. Ooh, there you go. Okay, perfect example. So, your jump, again, I'm just pointing out the good points now. Your jump, look at how low you are. But you jump yeah. and you also tilt your car back. So you get that like extra little bit. See? Because now, yep. instead of going like this, you get that little bit more height. So that's a that's a good example of why you should do that more. Mm -hmm. All right, if I go back to your view here. I'm just gonna say you got time. There you go, I like that you bring it out to mid. That's good. Ooh, not bad. Um. I'd say, if anything, you could try to just front flip into it. I don't think uh, this guy's going to have the reaction time here. So, again, if you go this way, then you cut here. Or you, um, I think, a flip left or a front flip. I'd say a front flip would be okay here. Um, 
Ideally, you'd flip left, actually, to try to hit more. Uh, like, if you flip left a little earlier, you could kind of hit the more of the middle of the ball. Um, obviously, if you're off to the, if you're really off to the side, you're going to hit, like, this part of the ball, and it might go wide. So you kind of got to be careful. But, like, I think from this angle, you know, if you get used to flipping into the ball and getting those power shots, like those power mm -hmm. clears and stuff like that, that would be a more appropriate way to do this. Because now the fact that you hit it again and you double jump, is kind of nice, you know, that you're following it. But now, look, you're landing almost in his net. Whereas, had yeah. you flipped earlier, you could have landed maybe on his goal line, but you could actually just turn and still have your speed and be able to get out. So, it's not a bad yeah. attempt. But uh, you know, think about you got to think about those times like when you're flying into his net. Um, again, a similar situation, right? So you have a couple options here. I'd say number one, Rainy would say just take this back to your side. Gather that yeah. info, right? Steal the boost, boost starve, then make a play forward if you need. Um, but yeah, again, this has now twice been on his side of the field where you try to literally quick turn on this ball when you don't know where he is, you don't know how much boost he has. So, yeah. <laughs> I think once you do see him coming, you should basically try to jump into that. You don't always need to front flip. Ooh, that's a good boost deal there. But I think jumping on the 50-50 would be a little bit better. I like your dribbles. Yeah, there you go. Good boost. Okay, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, you're flipping still a little too late. You can see by the time you land, he's already hitting the ball. And look, look where you land. Instead of landing yeah. on the on the outer circle here, or the, well, I call it the inner circle because I call this the outer circle. But instead of landing here, you land on this tiny circle. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I think that's just the main difference here. He was out. This guy is, I think, probably a lot quicker than you on kickoffs. I think he's already done that a couple times now. Yeah. Um. So this ball here, you can actually still just grab this boost, like, you know, off the kickoff. Like, he's probably not going to be here right away. If you just grab this boost and turn around, or just grab this boost, and as you're turning around, you turn on ball cam, then you can make a play on it and push it out. Um, I think this hit here is kind of unnecessary, because now, you're, if anything, you're giving up the ball. Because look, look at where he's at. Now, it's like, okay, well, now I hit the ball. I'm going to make it safe, and then now I'm going to go grab boost. Now I'm going to go away from it. Well, now, look. Now he's like, okay, well, now you're so far away from the ball, I kind of have a chance to go for it. Whereas if you didn't, it would be much better still. And got scored off of it. All because I think you just hit that <laughs> you hit that ball earlier when you didn't need to. And I'd say similarly, like that's a similar situation, right? You're you're challenging the ball again with no information. You don't know where he's at. And you're trying to either it's not exactly the same as before, but you're still trying to hit the ball when you don't know a whole lot here. You don't know where he's at. You don't know how much boost he has. So you don't need to. So I'll skip ahead that. Not a bad kickoff. I like your boost pathing there. Probably pick up one more pad. Yeah, I'd say in this time, there's um, you could grab your corner boost if you wanted to. Um, if you feel that he's probably going to shoot it right away. Um, you can actually still... You know, you can kind of do one of these. You can pick up this pad, this pad, maybe turn around if you want. That's an option. Um, if you see he's got this space, you can actually just do one of these. Pick up, uh, maybe not all three of these, but I'd say this one and this one. Pick up these okay. and turn back. Um, you can kind of use this space a little bit more, I think, here. Because look at, he's not actually setting up the play. He's just kind of waiting to get into a good position here. And in this time, you're just sitting here with 20 boost. You didn't really do a whole lot. So yeah, you're just literally you're you're driving towards him, waiting to get challenged, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Cause now, and here's another thing too, you're pushing out way too early here because now look at. From uh, from this perspective, as you push out, half the net is actually behind you. So all he has to do is just get a cut to the left here. In any any aspect, right? And. Mm -hmm. 
if he gets one touch to the left, then the entire net is behind you. So whereas if you had just gone like this, dropped back and do a circle, or you know if you feel you can challenge, you you would have had more momentum to challenge this earlier, but you didn't, and you're kind of using the boost that you have. You're kind of slow. So whereas if you just pushed up, you had grabbed boost beforehand, you would either be able to challenge this if you want or to turn back and try to make a save that way. But because you're you were kind of lollygagging and whatnot while he was basically setting himself up. So Yeah. Alright. Keep going here. Yeah, this guy's pretty solid on kickoffs. He's pretty fast. He's really confident in that flip. Yeah. He's doing really well. Missed the boost, that's alright. You can take your back corner on the left. Um, you can actually take the mid right, mid left if you want, if you're quick enough. There you go. Um, I'd pick up. There you go. Pick up more pads as you come in. Okay, yeah. So if anything, there's um. Let's see here. So I can kind of explain this. I'd say in this scenario, it's a similar situation to before, where. Your net is not in the sidewall here, right? It's similar to like when you have when he had the ball on his back wall. Yeah. Because like you're pushing out way too far and trying to challenge the ball when you don't need to. Like, even if you push this behind him, he might still be able to turn around and make a save because it's it's going to go along the sidewall here, right, along the whole side of the field. Yeah. Um, so again, it's very low percentage. The fact that he knows you're coming this entire time too, right? It's not like you're going to surprise him. Like he knows you're there. So, and yeah, you're okay. pushing out way too far off to the, to the side here when your net is way over here. You're putting yourself way out of position. Um, if anything, if you wanted to challenge this, um, I would say, yeah, go like this and then fake challenge and heads back, head back to net um, because that's where your net is. And you can kind of force him to make a move and then hopefully be able to make up for it when you, when you turn around. So I'd say this would be a good time to fake challenge here. Yep, just turn around. But I think you pushed up a little too a little too far. Okay, perfect example, right, of you actually getting away from the play to get more info. Because now mm -hmm. you know where the ball is going. Imagine I can see another world where you chase after this ball and you, you go like this and you're sitting underneath it. Then your camera yeah. is facing up like this. You don't know what the hell to do. He's grabbed your boost. He might bump you, right? There's a whole but there's a whole lot of reasons that could be wrong. But instead of just getting rid of all these question marks up here, right? You get away from the play. You're like, okay, it's not going immediately in my net. I'm just going to get a better position and turn around. So this is a perfect example of that. Because now yeah. you still have boost. You're in a good position. You get away from the play. Now you can basically make a clear out to the corner. You can make a save. So that's another good example. And you got the save. And that was a much easier decision to make <laughs> than right. turning around before, like, you know, turning around on a play when you don't know where this guy's at. So that that's much easier. I like your patience. There you go. Get behind him. You can take his boost here, which you do. Nicely done. And you got a good dribble. Oh, dang. This guy. Yeah, he's speedy. Woo. Yeah, he's diving like crazy. There you go. See, I don't mind you grabbing that mid. Grab your back. That's fine. Okay. You're going really fast. I would slow down. There you go. Okay. Again, nice save. <laughs> okay. One thing to note here. You were going really, really fast. So I like the fact that you uh, you braked here. Cause, and you should break. Yeah, right there. That's a good spot. I was kind of worried that you'd either turn and challenge this right away because you had a lot of speed. The other mm -hmm. thing to note, too, is you don't want to go here right and you don't want to challenge in the middle of the net because here let me actually uh let me back this up this is a similar situation now you'll see a lot in ones i'm gonna kind of draw it here you want to think of like as a play is coming you want to think of there being a line between the goal and the net here or the goal and the ball sorry and as mm -hmm. you drop back you don't want to do one of these and then stop here or to go like this and challenge because now if he shoots it, he can shoot it at you in the corner, right? Or yeah. he can shoot it this way, and you still have you have to turn around again and make another save, which might be okay. awkward. So mm -hmm. I like the fact that you stop 
on this side of the field and you still challenge like this, which is good. I'd say maybe if anything, maybe slow down a little bit, like literally in the corner here, because then you can actually, you know, you can still push out and make a save if you need to. So you can see how you, the only time you cross this, this vertical line is when you challenge the ball. Because otherwise, if you cross this line when you're not challenging the ball, well, then it's like, okay, well, now he can kind of shoot wherever, and you either have to turn back or try to turn and beat him, you know. And that's way more awkward. So you're, you're close here, but uh, I like the fact that you stayed on this side of the field. There you go. Again, really nice save. You've had a, two of those saves now. Nice boost grab. You can steal his corner if you want. Obviously, you're prioritizing the net because, yeah, he's in net. That's good. Nice. All right, 4-4, four, four, minute and a half. This guy's been really speedy on kickoffs, but you've had insane defense so far. Um, I'd say if anything, um, again, yeah, I think the big thing was probably getting rid of those scenarios, right, where the ball is in the midfield and you're trying to turn and cut it because you basically have lost every single time. I'd say that's probably your yeah. biggest, biggest issue. Uh, second, okay. second biggest issue is boost usage. You don't flip a whole lot. Um, yeah. So I'd say maybe try to incorporate flips a little bit more into your gameplay. You'll be a little bit more efficient on the boost usage. I'd say those are probably your big, two biggest things. Not a whole lot bad otherwise, though. Um, do you have any questions or anything about anything I've said so far? Or anything uh, not no. make any sense? No, it, it all it all makes sense. I do feel like a lot of the time in ones, I just like really don't know what's going on or like where the opponent is. So yeah. I feel like I'm getting a lot. Yeah. But like in twos or threes, when you just go behind your teammates. It's right. A lot, yeah. It's a lot yeah. Exactly. Uh, um, but I will, I'll say to that point too. Like you know, every time you've kind of just said screw the play, I'm going to back grabbing back in my boost. You've had a pretty yeah. decent save, and you kind of have more info to work off of. So maybe just keep doing that. If you're not sure where he's at mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, like, is giving him one ball possession really going to make or break a game? Probably not, especially when you're still a couple minutes into it, right? So, like, mm -hmm. you know, you may not want to do that now that you guys are even score, you know, with a minute left. So you may not want to do that, but it might, oh, it might be a little safer to do that, especially in the early game, you know, because um, yeah. it's really risky. So, you know, when you challenge it like that. So, yep. Again, flat kickoffs. <laughs> Man. Yeah, he's been fast, but that's the one thing, too. If, if he doesn't land his flip here perfect, then, yeah, he's trying, to, he's trying to basically beat you. You can see he basically had you beat. If he hits right. this ball, it's going past you on his left. So it's really risky for him. But I don't want to do – like, I'm okay being second to the ball, but I want yeah. to flip it. Right, so Correct. Like, yep. There you go. Not bad. Um, I think, if anything, let me kind of slow this down. And I'm actually going to go into a fly view for a second. Okay. So, you actually did a decent job here. I think that this flip is too early because, again, you can see – that you're kind of hitting this almost with the top of your car now. Whereas you want to be flipping into it. You had actually, you had like 90% of this was perfect. You flipped and saved boost. You boosted a little bit more when you needed to, which is fine. And by the time you jump right here, which is good. And you hit the ball in the middle of the ball, which is good. All right. So 90% of this is good. The fact that you actually used your flip though is a, right here. Because now instead of driving the ball with the very, very front of your car, you're letting your car roll super early. So you're not actually hitting this ball in the middle of the ball. You, yeah, you may get first, like your very first touch, but but now by the time you get any touches after that, it's actually on the top of your car, which is not really what you want. You basically want to drive this ball as much as you can with the front of your car. Because when you flip, that's going to have the most amount of force on the ball. Okay, so I flip so, later is what you're saying. I would that say, if anything, yeah, flip... And you want your very first, you want to jump here, right? And you mm -hmm. want to be able to go meet the ball here. And you literally want to flip like right here. So okay. that way the nose of your car is literally flipping as much as you can into this ball. Again, try so to jump earlier and flip later. Yeah. Yep. Yes, exactly. Yep. 
And okay. we can go over kickoffs. I'll show you some probably some good examples of some ones games that I played um, with okay. uh, Sir Puff from the channel. I did these games yesterday, and uh, we can kind of go over that. And I'll kind of we can go into a private match if you want to, but um, I can kind of show you some good examples. There you go. I like the boost usage here now because you saved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, not the worst challenge. Pick up the pads too, which is nice. Get in good position. You're good so far. Let him just use it. Okay, don't get rid of your boost. You're good. All right, you picked up another pad. You picked up another pad. See? That's what I pointed out earlier you should have done. And you got burned on it because you weren't picking up pads earlier when you had the space. Now you're picking up mm -hmm. pads when you had the space. Now you got 50 in net. Now you recognize, okay, I might be able to go for a challenge here. Not the best timing. He was obviously quick. But still much better, like, setup so far. Um, okay, so here's another situation where I think your boost usage is a little crazy. Because now, pick up 100... Dude, where's your yep. net? You're, you're flipping off to the left or into the corner. Um, that's uh, that's not where your net is. Just flip to the right or f diagonal flip or front flip, if anything, right? But literally, don't don't flip to the corner. It's totally useless to go this way. Because, <laughs> okay. yeah, well, now, what are you boosting into the corner for? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going this way, but your net is that way, my dude. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. That's another example where you should be flipping here because you can actually beat you can basically be almost in the net right now if you wanted to be if you flipped mm -hmm. but instead you're just boosting off to the corner and yeah he's just he's beating you on everything he's flipping he's being a lot more efficient mm -hmm. see there's this boost usage again you're trying to stay supersonic you're supersonic okay you lost it here you might want to spurt it okay now you're supersonic stop at 85 but now you're at 75 there's like these little differences with your boost usage. Again, you don't need to be using 100. You don't need to be using any boost at all here, actually. You could flip. Mm -hmm. You could have grabbed your back corner boost and just flipped this way. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you could have done one of these. Grabbed your pad here, then flip here. So that way you land, like, roughly right here or whatever, right? Then you can decide, okay, now I can challenge or whatever. But you'd be in a much further spot without having to use that boost. Mm -hmm. So Makes I think just being more efficient here would be a little bit better because yeah Pick up a hundred now drop back Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think this is another scenario where okay You're in a good spot He's coming up. He's gonna hit the ball if anything you're dropping back a little too quick cuz Now it's like okay He sees you coming And he hits it, but you're still like you're still in the corner when even when you turn back you're still not just like going back to net. You see how many times you're on defense now and you're in this corner. You're all along the sidewall. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. even if you fake challenge now, literally just l do a U-turn and drive back to net. Be as quick as you can that way. That way you can be back here as he's pushing this up and you can make a better save this way. And in fact, you actually probably had enough time if you did a quick U-turn this way to boost back to net, to flip back to net, and then turn again and come forwards and make a save. I bet you probably did, if you did this efficiently. Okay. Whereas instead, you you went up this way, went back to this corner, but this entire time when you drive back to the corner, you're just totally, you know, you could have done one of these. But instead, this entire time that you drive from here to here, is a total waste. You don't want to do this. Obviously, right. sometimes obviously grabbing your back boost and stuff like that is good, but um, I think here, again, one of those scenarios where like if you just get in a good spot beforehand, it might be an easier save for you. Okay. Because you've had pretty good success so far. You know, when you pick up the pads in net, when you have a good spot in net, right? Then when mm -hmm. you challenge and you can kind of pick a better time to go, that's when That's when you actually get those saves Not bad, I think he's kind of proven at this point that he can uh, I guess suppose you're down. You're at five to five. This is kind of rough Um yeah, I don't know. I worry that because, like, now this entire time, this is really risky because this is also really close. Like, he can see you coming from the side. Let's watch from his perspective. He's taking his time. He drops it here. 
but he also is able to get it on top of his car really quickly. So all he had to do was just have a little bit more control and that way basically would have been a goal for him. So I think maybe that challenge was a little iffy, but let me see how you actually did it. Okay, so, all right, if anything, I'm gonna apply one of the things I said earlier. Let's watch this again real quick. I'm gonna watch it from here. All right, he's got the ball in his car. And you basically know he's going to go over you. You know yeah. he's going to flick it. Yeah. Look at where your car is. Again, this is the same thing as the kickoff. You're jumping into this ball horizontally. You don't have a whole lot of height here. Again, if you yeah. jump and tilt your car back, you could be meeting this ball up way higher. You could basically be dunking him for sure. I think the only reason you do is because actually the height of your car flips around and gets the ball <laughs> here. Yeah. Whereas if you had just jumped and tilted your car back to hit it with the front of your car, that'd be a lot safer. I would expect a challenge like that to be more appropriate. Okay. So again, meeting meeting it with the uh, with the front of your car. Because yeah, you can see by the time you flip into this, you're only you're not even at the height of the ball. You're very lucky that th the height of your car accidentally got you there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's twice now that this has uh, this has happened, and you've gotten really close. You've done a really good job so far on your two previous. You had two nutty saves, and you can see that's when you actually got the height on it. And yeah. I pointed out earlier, and you actually did a really good job at that before, and you got really, really lucky that he didn't score that. Yeah. There you go. That was nice. That was really clean. Flashing your camera for victory. <laughs> As long as you can hold on to it. Um, all right. I think, uh, yeah, this guy just had solid kickoffs. This guy's really fast, right? So I am not going to lie. I totally would have expected this guy to, to be able to win this. I think there's another, you know, if you guys kept playing another game or so, I think he definitely can take the cake on it, you know? Yeah. There you go. Love the boost usage. Okay. I don't know if you're like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing here. If you think you basically have the game one or what, but like, yeah, you can literally just grab this boost, maybe back up a little bit to get more field of view. Not bad idea, but then you see him in your field of view. Just keep going towards the ball or if anything, wait for him to 50 it or if anything, yeah, just get the hell out earlier. Cause now again, you're underneath the ball. It's super awkward. Like what I talked about earlier, this is where you do not want to be because now your field of view is like this. You can obviously see him in your face. But imagine if he didn't challenge this. Imagine if he was off screen to the left, like to your, you know, in the net or whatever, coming to challenge. This would be super yeah. awkward. So this would be another scenario where if you just got the hell out, <laughs> you'd have a lot more to work with. Um, yeah. Obviously, you're up now, so you don't want to get rid of ball possession. But, uh, but yeah. I suppose I don't mind you actually kind of staying on this now because, yeah, you don't really want to give him space. So it's fine. But, all right, yeah, overall, um, not too bad. I'd say uh, just maybe uh, try to avoid those scenarios where you don't know where they're at. And uh, try to – here, let me go into free play, actually. Real quick. Even something like that where I'm actually jumping up and hitting the ball with the middle of my car. Mm -hmm. Meeting it. I think doing that, those kind of shots would really help you out. I'm just using down on the D-pad, so I don't know if that's something you want to practice in free play or not, but yeah. being able to get those power shots like that, now that that's a pretty decent shot for platinum, <laughs> mm -hmm. in my opinion. I haven't been platinum right. in a long time, so you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but like that, sound, that seems way better than just going like this and kind of just dinking it where if yeah. you stay underneath it that's that's where you start getting into like the high level shots right but being able to hit underneath the ball like this now i can shoot it from back behind half court so that's the difference <laughs> of always hitting it with the front of your car jumping and staying underneath it but you meet the height of the ball first so yeah Hopefully that helps as far as that explanation goes. Yeah, but, that makes sense. Um, all right. Then as far as the kickoffs, I believe. Okay. This one has a lot of goals, so this would be good. 
Okay, so yeah, this was... Oh, no, this was actually my ranked ones. All right, never mind. I don't know if we want to look at that. Let's look at the... Uh, let's look at the one from yesterday. Twelve. Let's try this one. This was against Sir Puff. Okay, this was perfect. We had a lot of good kickoffs that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. These are much higher level kickoffs, right? So, so I don't expect yeah. you to have that my level of like kickoffs right away. But the thing to note is um, maybe where I flipped. So on this one, let's uh, let's slow it down. Again, I'm flipping as I pick up as my front wheels pick up that boost pad. Okay, I land on the inner circle like I said. So my front tires yeah. are here. Then ideally, I'd hit the front of my car right here in the middle of the ball, and I'd flip to the right and my car would go to the right as well. And so you want to flip just as you hit the ball. Basically. Correct. Yep. Yep. So let's let's see that here in action. Boom, and you can see I'm getting my touch and I'm following through with my flip. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And let's see it from uh, Sir Puff's perspective, I guess, cuz he does a pretty decent job as well. There you go. And we both side flip. It doesn't go like a crazy pinch anywhere. You know, he still wins it. He probably had a better landing on his on his or for better first touch. But, uh, yeah, he was coaching me as, or he was asking me for coaching as well. So, um, all right, let's see this straight away. Again, we both side flipped again, very tame, right? He's, he's having pretty decent positions on this stuff, but, um, kickoffs aren't everything. This would be a situation where I just go, okay, he won the kickoff. He's got, obviously, both boosts in the corner and the side booster there. So I know, yeah. okay, I don't have this win. If I turn and try to jump up and challenge this ball, it's going to go off my backboard, out center, and he's going to be able to drive it in my net. So this would be a perfect scenario of me just going, okay, screw the play. I don't care about any of this. I'm just going to grab boost, get in a good position, and I'll get more info. So I'm applying that exact thing, what I said earlier, to my own game. And Sir Puff, I believe, is champ, champ one, maybe, in ones. Um, but again, the speed of the play is a little bit faster, but it, the same idea applies. Yeah. And he had a gnarly 50 on me there. And he had a gnarly save, or shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, again, I'm landing in the inner circle. I flip as I pick up that first boost pad. I'm jumping and I'm meeting the ball height. Um, I'm hoping I can get a different kickoff here, but uh, again, I'm jumping. I kind of jump a little underneath the ball. Uh, I think my first touch, though, I think he kind of swiped the ball a little bit too much on this left side, so I think I actually did have a better first touch. Ideally, I'd jump a little earlier and hit the more middle of the ball. Um, if you actually go back, I think I was still a little underneath it. Yeah, you can see we're both still pretty low. We're both trying to be as fast as we can because he's trying to practice his uh, speed flip kickoffs. But um, so in this case, since we're both at the same height, I'm actually more, again, I'm flipping left into this ball. Whereas now he's actually, now he's basically already past it. He's flying past it. So his uh, his position, he's not driving the ball with the, for with the front of his car. He's letting it hit the side and it's basically rolling along the length of his car now instead of whereas me, I'm driving through it. So, yeah, our height doesn't matter as much here, but the same thing applies. I'm just trying to flip wherever the ball is going to. So, flipping to the right, my car's going to go to the right. Ball's hopefully going to go to the right. Let's see here. Again, yeah, you can see how every kickoff so far I have side flipped into the ball. So, again, I'm picking up pads. I do a nice speed flip. I land on the inner circle, and I'm going to hit the ball here and I'm gonna flip to the left and my car is gonna go to the left so again really consistent on that yeah you don't no, you don't need to front flip through them yeah no, that makes totally sense. no this is really helpful because I I haven't really known what to practice so no this is this is really helpful thank you yeah Oh, and then I remember this uh, this replay because I actually saved it at the marker at the bottom. Okay, another perfect example. Okay, I realize, oh, he might actually be going for my back boost. He might actually be going for the ball, so let me try to steal the mid. Okay, he got it. Okay, now I'm going to have to basically be as fast as I can. I speed flip from here, 
And again, this is kind of one of those points where I said if you flip, you can actually time it. So that way I can land. I'm going to boost here and I can still have 100 as I pick up the corner. Um, so I'm flipping as quick as I can. Again, getting yeah. that position. This has now been twice that this has happened. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Similar scenario. This guy's champ. He's multiple ranks higher than you, but he still made the same yeah. mistake. What do you think the chances are that he's going to score this? That he's magically going to be able to push this from here into my net? Very, very little. Yeah. I'm sure even high, like GCs and higher would have a hard time scoring this. You would basically have to hit this right on this side of the ball here to be able to push it this way. So this yeah. is a very, very tight angle. <laughs> I mean, you get the idea, but I mean, look at that. It's a very hard angle. So yeah, he's making the same mistake. Yeah. Being too greedy. And I, I don't know if I scored necessarily off of it, but he got punished for it. Nice angle there. Um, all right, I'm gonna skip ahead to my to the defensive play here because there was a couple points now where there was this. Uh... Oh, okay. So check this out real quick. I was going, I was being a cocky, cocky a hole here, going for a ceiling musty in a one v one. But dude, he actually almost had the save. I was kind of impressed. I was like, dang, this guy, he he's here to play. Oh, dude, had he actually flipped to the left, he would have had it. I think he. By the time he used his jump here, he was actually off the ceiling. So he used his jump and it propelled him down instead of being able to jump and flip. So, Got it. yeah, it's just an awkward timing on that. The timing is very tight. But, yeah, he actually almost had that. I was like, holy. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see this play here. There was a, This is a big defensive miss by him, I think, as far as the positioning goes. Okay, so he got the save. All right, so now I guess I'll just watch it and then I can go over it. Very tough, right? So he makes a save. All right, now I know. Okay, first of all, did you notice that he did not pick up the corner boost there? That's number one. Let's watch from his perspective. Because, yeah, he got the kickoff. He flipped in the same direction. He's fine here. He actually should ideally jump up into this ball and kind of hit it back off this sidewall here so that way it bounces out. He can actually then grab his boost and turn around and meet the ball somewhere in the midfield here and kind of make a play center. That would be the ideal scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously he hits this and he gets it clear this way. Obviously gets him time. Get, he allows him to get, get that corner boost and make a save or push up the field, which is fine, you know. Um, but he uh, did not pick up the corner boost for s somehow okay so now he's in a rough spot similarly to how I said uh, actually you know what let's watch from my this angle here okay so similarly um, like I said earlier when you're in this scenario where you're on defense you try not to cross this line if you can help it because now the fact that he came in from this side, now if he goes like this, now if he stops here, I can actually shoot top left, and he will have to turn around and make a save this way, which would be super awkward. Because now if he right. turns around, his, his controls might be backwards because the camera will be inverted as I'm shooting towards him. So left will be right and right will be left. It would be kind of screwed. So um, that's one thing. Then if at any point he goes like this, I can still shoot at top right and he'll still be dropping back to his net and trying to make a save and clear it off the, off of the top of his net or whatever off the backboard. So it's still yeah. super awkward. So just to, for multiple reasons, you don't want to cross this line. The exception here is that if you have enough time and you have the boost, you can actually turn around and stop right here because then See. you know the whole net is in front of you. That would be the exception is if you have the time. <laughs> Um, the other exception here would be actually if a, if he fake challenges and he's able to make a wide swing because then it's effectively the same thing. It's if if you have the time. Right. Um, and obviously, if you're if you're quick enough to do it, then you can kind of have more leeway. But yeah, those would be the exceptions. But the idea is that, you know, you either want to grab this pad, stop here or go like this and turn around and stop here. 
the idea being that you are facing the net the whole time or the whole net is in front of you either way because now if he challenges i can basically flick it over him and i have a lot of distance i can see him coming at any point so challenging here may not be is not a good idea um so as far as defensive positioning goes does that make sense as far as being on on one corner or the other yeah okay so, so like ideally you'd rather be on the right side or like or right side of his yeah i mean his. honestly i would say this would actually be a good time for him to waste time because now i'm at the half court right even if i shoot this he actually still has enough time with 20 boost or 20 boost to turn around and make a save this way it's still possible yeah. but because he's lollygag and he's not picking up, i don't know if he picked up these pads here but this would be the ideal rotation here at this point is he would pick up this pad this pad and now by the time he turns around and he stops here by the time I push up, it'll be closer, and he can kind of read the play a little bit better. So this would actually be a good time to stop and do that, which I think he does. So then let's talk about that. Okay, so he picked up the pad. It's very, uh, very slight because this is higher rank, right? So now, if, I don't know if you noticed, like I said earlier to you, when you were in the corner, your net is not in the corner. It's over here. Yeah. When his rotation, he actually picked up this pad and this pad. But he should not be going this distance here. He should not be going here because now this entire time that he travels from here to here is totally wasted. He should be picking up this pad, this pad, and just dropping straight back to net. Okay. The, speed, the, the, the speed of the play is so much faster now at champ ranks that he can't mm -hmm. afford to go this wide. He should basically yeah. be dropping back to net and going this way. So that should be the play. So now at this point, it's a game of 4D chess because now I'm, like, I've got the ball on the left. I'm most likely going to shoot it this way because I know he's over there. The whole net is over here. This is 4D chess now. Um, so I know by the time he comes in, um, I'm actually I'm confident that I can backflip flick it and get it over him because that's not what he's expecting. So that's what yeah. happens here. So get a little bit of 4D chess there, but um, as far as the positioning goes, I think he uh, he could have used this position a little bit better, drop back to net here, then you know come alongside of it and kind of wait for me to shoot, and then hopefully try to guess and get get a good uh, save. Mm -hmm. So that was like one play that he was like, "What the hell?" You know, like what do I do there? Because um, yeah, you'll find those scenarios a lot in ones where your your opponent's right here with boost with and ball and you're just sitting in net it's like okay well don't push up and go mid this way because now he can shoot on either side um so just pick one side and hope for the best <laughs> um yeah if he just sat here and he wait if he waited a little bit longer and he waited for me to shoot let's watch it from this side um i think if he waited a little bit longer you can see he's being a little too antsy if he jumps, either he has to be jumping and attacking this ball right now and go up high, like I said, or literally yeah. wait for me to shoot and try to literally get a goal line save on this line. Because okay. now, by the time, see how he's prematurely thinking I'm going to go this way, but I actually don't have the ball on the other side. It's actually facing more mid now. So if it was still on my car, if I had dribbled this on my car the whole time, then yes, I would probably flick it this way. But now that it's dropped... Now, at this point, again, this is very quick to quick thinking, but now at this point, I've got the ball on top of my car. I'm not going across this way. I'm probably going to go mid or behind him. So if he just slowed yeah. down and waited, he'd have a better goal line save here. He can still push forward. So it's very tough, right? The speed of the play is so much faster. He's in an awkward spot. He's playing against me. I'm going to brag a little bit. I'm pretty decent at this game. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. It's obviously pretty hard. Um, let's see what he does. Let's see the difference now. There you go. There's correct. the difference. Yep. I made the correct decision. I'm waiting. Um, again, if I go left here, I'm in the same spot. So if I go left now and I kind of shadow this ball in the middle of the field, well, now he can shoot either way. And it would be super awkward for me even. So what do I do? I stay shadowing, pick my time to go, and I sit here and I wait for my time to go. And that's exactly yeah. what happens. So you can see literally in the exact next play that uh, that's what happens. Yeah. So picking my time to go, I slow down because I realize he's not coming at my net quickly now. I don't need to like 
I don't need to keep going really fast into my net. I can actually slow down here. Okay, so this is a big thing too of matching the play speed. Not necessarily about like you, but like in general. See how he's boosting behind the play. I'm also boosting to keep my distance. If I don't boost here, he's basically blowing past me really quickly. But I'm not letting that happen. I'm using my boost as well. See, I'm keeping this distance the whole length of the field. Yeah. I'm making it awkward for him. I'm kind of eliminating possibilities now. So I'm getting more information at this point. So now that I know he's got the ball in his car, I can slow down. It's not like he's pushing it into my net on the ground, right? He's not going that fast. Now I can break. I can slow down. I pick, literally pick my time in the corner. I see I purposely kind of set him up to shoot behind me. Um, I was expecting him to be able to shoot behind me because now he's in a good spot if he flicks this to the his right it'll go behind me but yeah his execution was kind of bad here and he didn't get a good touch yeah. but i'm able to read the play so and then just punish him but you see how like uh, i'm basically doing the same exact thing on defense that i'm recommending to you so yeah i'm that's one of the things I, I hate. It was when people give advice and they're like, okay, we'll do that. Well, here's me actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it all makes, it all makes sense. yeah, awesome. Do you have any questions? I know I've talked for like a long ass time now, but um, does no, a lot of that I, make sense no, to you? Yeah, it all makes sense. And I can do that. Yeah. Right? You know, if you have some more specific questions. Yeah, so I'd say, yeah, if anything, if you want to learn to practice, I'd say, again, use the uh, down arrow down arrow on your uh, on Bacchus mod. can toss the ball up and try to get those power shots like that. You know, getting shots into the net where you're uh, not letting it hit the ground like that. You know, obviously, I hit, let that hit the ground, but you get the idea. Get it strong in the net. That that would really help on your uh, your power shots and whatnot. Something like that. I think you could totally do that. If, right, you, get, if yeah. you get used to doing that at all across the field, then you'll you'll be spot on for offense. And then yeah, for defense, I think it's just like okay. Uh, then yeah, you know, if the ball is coming this way, pick your time, go sideways. The second you turn like this, well now, they can shoot behind you, and it's super awkward to turn. So you really kind of want to stay sideways as much as you can, um, and especially as they go, because then, yeah, you can kind of match the play and always go forwards. Right, yeah, no, makes makes a little sense. Ooh, almost had that. Um Alright, I don't think I have anything else. Um as far as the boost usage goes, I mean I could show mm -hmm. you some pathing and stuff like that, but I mean really just try to incorporate more flips if you can. I really do think your flips are a little uh little little weak. Okay. Um yeah. Oh, that was your replay. Oh, yeah. I got GCN1s finally yesterday. Yeah, that was cool. Not. So why, why did you sign up for the program? Why did I sign up for the program? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's funny because you're not the only one that has asked me that. Um, Randy was joking around too. Like, you, you need to get your money back is what he said, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was hilarious. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I actually joined because I have put so many hours in this game. I've put over 6,000 hours, and I have not hit the highest rank in the game since SSL was made. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that playing with my current teammates who are only like champ one, champ two maybe at max maybe, um, I'm not going to get it. And I knew mm -hmm. I still had a lot of improvements to make. I was kind of on the coasting phase, right, of just playing on autopilot all the time. And, right. you know. I'm always playing against players that like, especially if I Q threes, which is what I mained back, you know, before I joined the program, um, I'm GC. So I'd play against three GCs with myself and two champ one teammates. So it was always kind of a grind. I'm like, okay, well, something's obviously I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get my goal. I'm not going to reach my goal. If I keep expecting the same things to happen, you know what I mean? Right. So yeah. Ooh. Okay. Very slight, but I missed the shot. But even just getting jumping and shooting that. Right. It's, it's just so much, so much and just, and you also get to it. It's yeah. Like I probably went down to the kitchen. Yeah. Now. This was my game to actually get me into GC, by the way. Um, terrible kickoff there. 
using my camera. I thought I was playing really well yesterday, actually, in ones. I'm a little nervous to play ones today because I'm not sure, um, not sure how I'll uh, how I'll do today. Okay, my main thing too is um, when you do have ball possession, try not to dribble at him. At this point, I can't see him, so right. you can see I actually bring the ball more left, so yeah, I can see yeah. him the entire time. Uh, again, um, the boost usage. I've dribbled this entire play without using a single path <laughs> boost. Right. And even when I cross the field and I'm going to aim for the net, I'm not actually aiming at the net. Because if I aim at the net, I can't see him behind the ball. So I cross the net, and I get a good flick over him. Yep. <laughs> that, yeah, that was... <laughs> Thank you. That was really good. Oh, thought I could get underneath it there. Um... All right, yeah, I think, uh, honestly, I think your, your kickoffs, if you flip twice, you practice your, uh, your power shots and maybe flipping around, you know, try not to get rid of your boost uh, yeah. as much. Those three things, you'll be, you'll be golden. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. I almost hit a freaking ceiling musty. I totally forgot about this. I had Demon, my two's teammate in this program. Uh, thanks. Um, he said, uh, go for something nasty. So, <laughs> so I did. And I, he said, "Go for a ceiling musty rebound." And I said, "Okay," and I almost delivered, bro. That was that would have been insane. Had him in, uh, had him in Discord when I was doing that. All right. Anyways, I could talk about myself all day. <laughs> but. All right. Well, uh, thank you, thank you so much for this. Yeah, no problem, dude. Like I said, if you have any questions or anything like that, always feel free to hit me up. No, I will. I'm sure I will. All right, man. Cool. See you later. Appreciate it. See you.